Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, your host, joined by C.J. Vogel of On Texas Football. This program, state of the program, brought to you by Adam Lowy and the Lowy Law Firm. C.J., uh, we got several things we want to discuss this week in the state of the program, uh, but none more impactful right now than the portal. Uh, the Longhorns have now seen four guys, as of this taping right, right now, uh, enter the portal uh, today. Jamon Tapp, young man out of Donaldsonville, uh, Louisiana, has entered the portal. He was a backup edge rusher uh, for Texas, had seen very little time uh, during his first year, two years on campus, and obviously was behind some other guys uh, in the in the pecking order, yet still very talented. Uh, so I think this is the interesting part now. Uh, Billy Walton also going in the portal on Monday. Again, very talented. Peyton Kirkland in the portal. Samaj Burrell. Texas is losing talented players, but not necessarily top of the heap players right now, uh, which is a sign of a team that is getting better from an athleticism standpoint, a skill standpoint, et cetera. But, but I'm telling you, Jamon Tapp and Billy Walton hurt your depth at edge a little bit, right? Yeah, they absolutely do. And it's tough losing two pieces like Jamon Tapp and Billy Walton at edge spot. We've talked about how much that room has improved talent-wise and depth-wise with the addition of a Colin Simmons, a Zena Umiozulo, a Trey Moore, the return of a Colton Vosick. That room was certainly trending in the direction of becoming one of the strengths of the entire team. This certainly hurts it a little bit in regards to the depth that you'll see at the position. I'll certainly – uh, put more reliance on a guy like Colton Voss to stay on the field and kind of create his own imprint on the Texas defense this year. Uh, but Bobby, to your point, Texas is losing talented players. Uh, but of those four players that have entered the portal at, at the time of this recording, only 11 career appearances so far. And so while it is tough to see each, you know, each Texas player enter the portal, it's worth mentioning Texas is, uh, is still in a position to be very healthy at each position of which we've seen portal departures at the moment. That's very important. Of course, you don't want to lose your top end talent, uh, but maintaining that depth at each spot is going to be very crucial over the next couple of days uh, as the portal progresses in, in the open window at the moment. I, I got to say this. Uh, you mentioned uh, the depth of the position. Justice Finkley, another name that uh, it provides depth there. Colton Vosick, Ethan Burke, Baron Sorrell, obviously already seeing a lot of playing time as well. Then you add Colin Simmons and Trey Moore into the mix. We get it. Zena Umiozulu is a, a freshman. We we understand uh, the situation. I, I just think that, you know, it's going to be hard because Texas fans, I mean, there's a reason to like Billy Walton. There's a reason to like uh, Jamon Tapp. They flash a little bit, right? Um, and Walton at, at one point was having a really good spring this year. So it's not, th this is not a situation where it's, Oh, well, he's just transferring. These are, these things are going to hurt a little bit. Now, with that move, CJ, Texas now down to 85 scholarships. Um, uh, four moves so far this uh, this offseason right now uh, from 89. Uh, I was told uh, that Burt Auburn, the kicker, is not going to be put on scholarship. His NIL is actually exceeding uh, what it costs to go to school, so he's in good shape there. So right now they're they're even at 85 if they don't add anybody. But you and I know both know two things. One, they're going to add people. We'll talk about that in a second. Two, they're going to lose some more people, right? I I said originally Texas would lose six to eight to the portal this offseason. What is your number, CJ? Yeah, seven feels very firm for me right now. And, you know, kind of going down the list, uh, I think the real surprise of this group so far has been Billy Walton, just because he's been on campus uh, so short. You know, his time here was only a season. Uh, maybe you give him the benefit of the doubt behind the scenes of, 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 you know, expecting him to see where he is after a season or two. Uh, right now, of course, he did enter the portal. Uh, the other names, not necessarily too much of a surprise there, but uh, I do expect at least three more names to enter. Uh, defensive back is where I'm keeping my eye on at the moment. Uh, of course, a couple names on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know if Kyle Flood will be able to uh, hold on to all of his children that he's been able to uh, accumulate over the last couple of years. So uh, that will certainly be an area of, of – you know, close watching as well. But right now, seven feels accurate. I think Texas at least needs to have 
or as, like to see two more depart just to see what else they can add from the portal at positions of need. We talk about defensive tackle. That's certainly one where spot needs to open up uh, moving forward. Well, in, in the interesting thing about Walton, uh, you know, I was told last week he had a conversation. He and his parents had a conversation with uh, Texas and that he had decided to stay at Texas. Uh, but over the weekend, something changed. So there's also that nature of this business where, you know, things can and do change. Um, and these young men have to make decisions they think are in their best interest uh, as well. Uh, so you have to worry or you have to think that that could always be a surprise of sorts uh, as well. All right. I want to say thank you. We're going to talk about the incoming prospects now as well. But, but first, I want to say thank you to our sponsor. That's Adam Lowy of the Lowy Law Firm. If you've been injured in a wreck, car, truck, uh, ATV, motorcycle, what have you, and you think you might be due compensation, uh, reach out to the best. That's Adam Lowy, 20 plus years experience in the Austin and surrounding areas throughout the state of Texas. Reach out to him, lowylawfirm.com. They will give you a free consultation uh, and tell you what they think of your potential claim. That's lowylawfirm.com. Thank you, Adam, for your sponsorship of State of the Program. All right, incoming guys. CJ, you reported this morning that Bill Norton, defensive tackle out of Arizona, would be visiting Texas this weekend. Um, interesting thing here, Texas already has one defensive tackle from Arizona uh, at, at Texas. Tia Savea came in the uh, uh, winter term. Now you have uh, po potentially Bill Norton, what is the latest news you have there on the big defensive tackle out of Arizona? Yeah, I was told uh, Bill Norton will be on campus this weekend for the spring game, making his first trip since entering the portal uh, on Tuesday, will be to Texas. And, of course, the tie there is Johnny Nance and the former Arizona defensive coordinator, now Texas linebacking coach and co-DC uh, here in Austin. That's the connection, of course. Texas is in the market for an interior defensive lineman, and in the market for a guy that plays over the nose. Not so much just any interior defensive lineman, a guy that can stand right across from the center and really be that run plugging uh, a piece right across uh, the line there. So uh, the big thing there, 6'6", 325 is the accurate height and weight for Bill Norton. Uh, 150 snaps a year ago, 70 of which came over the A gap, 70, 179 of which came uh, uh, over the B gap. So uh, again, a nice split there, um, only a nine snap difference there uh, uh, between his A and B gaps. Of course, that's where Texas is looking to add pieces. We saw a lot of Byron Murphy in the A gap a year ago, as well as Tavondre Sweat. No longer having those uh, pieces with experience there. Now you're looking at a guy uh, who's played five years of college football. Let's not forget his most recent being his most uh, 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 fruitful at the moment. Uh, but Bill Norton visiting Texas this weekend for the spring game, a piece that Texas could certainly look to add in terms of depth and experience over that A gap. All right. Uh, that's not the only one. I mean, let, let's be honest. Uh, uh, we've said all along Texas might uh, go for or was going to try to go for two defensive tackles, um, especially if the right ones came available. Uh, look, they might try to go for as many as three. Even I could, I mean, they need depth at defensive tackle, particularly over the nose right now, because other than Anthony or Aaron Bryant, excuse me, they don't have a natural nose tackle on campus that is a junior or above right now. You know, Sadir Mitchell is a sophomore, a, a true sophomore, and just coming on could be even considered a redshirt freshman. And then you also have Alex January, who could be considered that. But frankly, again, he's very young. So I, I can see Texas trying to push the envelope at that defensive tackle position over the nose uh, in this uh, portal session. We have not heard yet whether or not either of the Michigan defensive tackles are going in the portal for sure. Uh, those young men, uh, you know, I, why would you even think they might go in? Well, the, I think some uh, one of them at least tinkered with the idea uh, in the summer or in the winter time after losing the head coach, the defensive line coach, the defensive coordinator, and then another defensive line coach due to a DWI. Uh, it's been a little uh, murky up there. And then Michigan yesterday goes on probation uh, as well for three years. So uh, that allowing them to move kind of freely as well. Then you have guys uh, at UCLA and even USC that are possibilities. For the Longhorns as well, if, if, big if, they enter the portal after all. But I will say this, Texas now with tap, losing tap, down to 85 scholarship total, okay? So there has to be more attrition, CJ. You said seven, I said six to eight. There has to be more attrition. There's room for three to four more so they can add guys like Bill Norton 
and whoever else they might find in the portal uh, on the backside. So there's a little give and take here. It's natural uh, for the Longhorns. All right, uh, let's move on a little bit, uh, CJ, to the next portion of this show. Uh, we want to talk about the spring game a little bit. Uh, and what we want to talk about is uh, a couple of things. You met, wrote an article uh, earlier this week on ontexasfootball.com uh, where you were talking about the guys you felt like have stood out in spring practice based on not only what Steve Sarkeesian has said, not only what players have said uh, to the media, but what you're hearing behind the scenes. Give folks a few names and, and maybe uh, some context behind the guys that you're hearing behind the scenes are performing probably above what you thought they would be this time just a month ago. Yeah, it was really just an accumulation of, of intel that we've received behind the scenes this spring of guys that, you know, uh, have made some noise. And there's familiar names here. Of course, Nato Umi Ozulu made the list. David Benda, uh, a veteran of the Texas team, on this list as well. But uh, just in terms of when, when I sit back and I talk to team sources or I listen to Steve Sarkeesian or some of the players during their availabilities, these names just currently pop up. And I think this is very encouraging for the Texas Longhorns because there's already a number of starters and contributors on this list. One, uh, We'll start on the offensive side of the ball because I, I loved, and, and Bobby, I know this is going to make you happy as well, Trey Weisner's name has been all over the place this spring. He's a guy that we've certainly heard about uh, a year ago as a true freshman on the special team side of things. Now he's starting to really make his mark on the offensive side of things at that running back position. DeAndre Moore at the wide receiving spot. We know that he's a talented player coming out of St. John Bosco a year ago. Didn't see the field a whole lot. Did not record a catch as in his true freshman campaign. But he is that first guy at practice the first week that we were able to be there. He is still running with that first unit in Quinn Ewers in that offense. That's a guy that I've continued to hear a lot about taking steps towards getting on the field and what has become a pretty crowded wide receiving group at the moment. Nato Umiozulu, of course, making the leap into that starting rotation at the moment, fending off Hayden Connor, Cole Hudson. Right now he's starting to create and grab more of that, that share of that left guard spot. And of course, defensively, I mean, uh, we have to start with Colin Simmons. What we've seen and heard from him so far, uh, Bobby, has been tremendous. A guy that we expect to be uh, in the rotation immediately as a true freshman uh, week one, a guy that has an insane ball get off and that acceleration off the line of scrimmage is going to be very frustrating for opposing offenses to deal with all around. And the, the, the one other guy I wanted to highlight and mention here is David Benda. And this has taken a little bit for David Benda to really get his uh, – his feet going at the linebacking position. Of course, he's been around at Texas for quite a while. He had a small stint. I saw the graphic on Twitter the other day uh, as a Texas running back in that LSU game way back in 2019. So it's taken a while for him to find his groove here, but he certainly has. And for two straight consecutive Saturdays coming off the field for scrimmages, one name that I've heard consistently is, yeah, David Bennett just flies around. He's not making every play, but he's around the football all the time. And when that happens – Good things uh, tend to go your way. So David Benda, that underrated athleticism uh, right now next to Anthony Hill, making a lot of noise in the middle of that Texas defense. Well, you know, last uh, last year, or two years ago, David Benda played a lot of minutes uh, for Texas um, early, um, but just got passed by Diamante Tucker Dorsey two years ago, took a lot of the snaps that he might have gotten, right? Yeah. Um, and he just, for whatever reason, didn't, keep going forward didn't keep going forward he was his 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 rate of improvement wasn't such that he was speeding up and then you have a a, a freak and no and I I use this term uh you know nicely like Anthony Hill show up on campus last year and all of a sudden a guy that's trying to grow trying to grow he gets you know put behind him uh to some degree right um and Jalen Ford comes back for an additional year uh so Benda last year I thought um, was improving, got lost in coverage a little bit, but you know, he, it's we talk about it all the time. They 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 go at their own rate. These guys aren't just uh, automatically growing into players. Some of them are 17 years old, and some of them are 22. When they right. really start to figure it all out, uh, it just all depends on that sort of thing. Uh, you know, one of the guys that that I thought was interesting that that Steve Sarkeesian mentioned yesterday, Jure Bledsoe. I want to get your thought on him and what you're hearing behind the scenes, because I think that personally he is the disruptive force potentially 
among the current defensive line, like more so even than Alfred Collins or Vernon Broughton. Um, what are your what are your thoughts about that? And how far have you heard he's come thus far this spring? Well, he's certainly gotten run with the first team unit on the interior defensive line. How much? Well, that kind of depends on his own play. That's kind of the thing with Jure Blood. So you see the flashes, you see the sparks of greatness because that athleticism is so uh, I would say advanced compared to his size, uh, where he's playing right now, and how important that is for the interior defensive line. Ray Bledsoe, almost in, in a sense of athletic talent and ability, is a unicorn because of what he's able to do at that weight. Two things, though. There needs to be more consistency. There, Steve Sarkeesian has talked about the flashes, but of course – same issue that we've seen with Alfred Collins during his time at Texas. We know how talented he can be and how impactful he can be. It's all about stringing that together whenever the play uh, might not be designed for you to make all of the plays. Whenever it's not necessarily you versus the guy and you have to go pin a center who's pulling, you have to block the, the running lanes, whatever it might be, you have to do your job in which it's not just reliant upon uh, your athletic ability. That's the next step for Jare Blood. So is to continue doing what's asked on a given situation regardless of uh, when you're not able to win that rep based off your athletic ability. Uh, right now, again, the flashes are there. Uh, he's been running with the first unit at times. Right now, Bobby, anytime he's uh, paired up with that second unit, he is very disruptive. And he's a guy that makes life uh, very difficult for an Arch Manning or whoever's with that group. So he's taking the steps. It's all about getting the weight right and also showing consistency. He's got to be better against the run is what I'm hearing. I mean, he's he's got a chance to be a special pass rusher upfield pass rusher based on everything I'm being told, but he's got to be more consistent staying his lane in his gap uh, on defense. He has the ability. He just, he has so much athleticism. His, his eyes overload his stomach a little bit. You know, it's like I can eat it all, you know, as opposed to you go through the buffet, I can do it all coach. Instead of sometimes, look, we need you to just play your role. Sometimes we need you to be the athlete that you are. It's, it's a little bit different. And so I think that's, again, where a player has to learn over time what's expected of them. It's not just uh, immediate, uh, but something worth uh, considering. To, to your point, Bobby, we uh, Jerry and I were outside of DKR uh, two weeks ago, you know, talking to recruits and, and prospects and families as they departed from the scrimmage. And we asked, you know, a couple folks, we were like, hey, like, who do you see on that, that defensive line as the toughest guy to guard? It, you know, very subjective question, but Jare Bledsoe's name came up more than once, and it was because of his quickness and athleticism in the passing game, which is why I think you'll continue to see him uh, as a third down guy in the middle of that Texas defense on long situations. Anytime that you're able to add him to that front, again, life just gets much more difficult in the interior when you have a guy like a Byron Murphy who can get after the quarterback so quickly. Jare Bledsoe has some of those characteristics, more so on the quickness than the strength at the moment. But again, he's been able to do it time and time again this spring. Like you said, it's the running game that needs to piece things together before you see him on the field for an extended run. All right. Uh, I want to, again, invite folks to come out uh, today at the, to the posse. We've talked about it on our live streams. Uh, but uh, today from 3 to 6 or 3 to 5.30 or so, uh, we'll be at the Posse East. Please come join us uh, and hang out a little bit. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll buy the first one on us. It is kind of a thank you uh, to people and watchers and viewers and readers of On Texas Football. Uh, one of those people that will be there is Adam Lowy, by the way. Uh, he'll be out there just hanging out with us as well as CJ, myself, Rod Babers, and Jerry Hamilton. Uh, Adam and the Lowy Law Firm have been helping injured Texans for 20-plus years. If you've been injured in an auto accident, uh, be it, whether it's truck, car, motorcycle, even an ATV, and think you might be due compensation, make sure you give Adam and his group a call at the LoweyLawFirm.com. We appreciate their sponsorship. Hope you guys are able to make it out uh, today at the Posse and maybe talk to Adam a little bit as well. He's a big Longhorn fan. Hey, uh, before we get to recruiting here to kind of close this out, um, CJ, I, I shouldn't say before we get to recruiting because as we get to recruiting, what are you looking for right now? Uh, we had Jackson Christian on campus yesterday for Texas in football, another basketball recruit on campus today after them picking up three. How big is this spring game situation right now for the Longhorns? Uh, you know, dozens of guys lined up to come in. Uh, poor weather potentially for the spring game as well. Uh, what, what are your thoughts of these spring game visitors that, you, that uh, you're thinking right now? 
Well, Bobby, I'm looking for the sun. You know, I'm hoping for some good <laughs> weather this week, and that's that's the start. But uh, I mean, you see the list there. A tremendous group of guys coming on the campus, and more so important for Texas, they're getting a lot of commitments in the 2025 class back to campus to help the Texas staff recruit and do the whole, you know, players recruiting players uh, kind of verbiage that we've been using over the last couple of weeks. To me, it's very important to, to see these uh, uh, these coaches coach in a game situation. Of course, we know Christel Conte and the Texas Athletics Department will put on a very nice decor de decorative uh, performance behind the scenes. You know, Bevo Boulevard will be running. They'll have the carousel out there, the the food trucks, the 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 pomp and, and glitter will be out on display for the Texas Longhorns. Of course, football is king down here. And anytime you get an opportunity to see, you know, two teams on DKR, they're going to have the opportunity to flex their muscle a little bit. They'll put that on display. There's no question about that. But in terms of what this means for recruits, it's about seeing how the coaches coach in a game situation, being able to see how these uh, players and fans get at, get lively with one another. It's very exciting in that sense uh, to kind of get a glimpse of what it's like to play a game at Texas. This was around the time last year, Bobby, that we saw Brandon Baker really start taking Texas a little bit more serious because he visited the Texas spring game. He saw the city of Austin in the spring, and he understood what it was like to play for and be coached by Kyle Flood in a game situation. That might happen again with a number of recruits. Of course, that list was very promising. But when you have five guys on in the Texas class back on campus to help say, hey, this is the reason why you should commit to Texas, it makes things a whole lot easier moving forward. Yep. All right. Uh, so I, I just think it's going to be a, a, a good weekend, even if it's rainy and that sort of stuff, because – to your point, um, players recruit players, right? And so you get five recruits back on campus that have committed. You get another dozen, two dozen that have offers. Players recruit players. So in the more familiarity with one another, you know, I think I think it'll be very, very positive for Texas. All right. Hey, if you guys want to keep up with the very latest news and information on the Longhorns uh, in between these videos that we put out, there's one way to do that. Go to ontexasfootball.com. Uh, right now, we are offering, we have a premium subscription. We are offering people $20 off the annual subscription. So instead of $59.95, it's just $39.95 annually or $5.95 monthly. All you have to do is use the coupon code OTFOG. That's OTFOG. You can become an, OT, an OG for On Texas Football. Uh, put that code in. Apply the code. You'll get a subscription for just $39.95. All right, CJ, that'll do it. Uh, I'll see you later today at the Posse, along with Jerry and Rod. Uh, uh, Longhorn fans, uh, three big days coming up. Uh, not only, in my opinion, uh, seeing what the Longhorns can deliver on the field on Saturday, but also all these recruits on campus as well. For CJ Vogel, I'm Bobby Burton. Thanks also to our sponsor, Adam Lowy. Uh, we'll see you next week on State of the Program. Welcome.